recording started now see today uh, the computer literacy or rather computer literacy is a kind of very misnomer term rather we are going for that one you can say that one there's a computer literacy at the same time some bit of digital literacy also although digital literacy comes under the purview of computer literacy but where the network is available so digital literacy is a kind of thing a broader perspective right now so <coughs> um, today i'm going to uh, tell you something regarding this one that is uh, we talked about on the software repo, yes, we were talking about the web technologies, okay? Now, regarding web technologies, uh, out of huge number of slides, we discussed 19 or 20, but today I'm rather going for a kind of practical thing. That is, if you want to use a server in your machine, in your laptop, in your desktop, then how you can run that server where you will have the database as well as the web server, as well as some kind of um, scripting language tools uh, that can both communicate uh, with the client as well as with the server and you can make some bit of interactive <clears throat> websites, webs and there are several uh, ready-made, uh, you see, there is a content management software like WordPress, although WordPress was previously a blog, a uh, microblog, it was considered as a microblog, but right now many people are rather making the websites also with the help of wordpress and by saying this one we will try to delve into the intricacies involved in the writing php or rather we will be going to learn some bit of php that is how it is different from html or rather other programming language scripting languages and this programming language is this scripting language or this programming scripting language this can be uh, so this programming language scripting language how it helps the users users means the developers for making a two-way communication or rather what we usually call it uh, the way 2.0 compliant uh, portal or software with the help of PHP. So our basic journey will be like that. First of all, we will install one software in our machine so that our standalone machine may act as or will act as one server machine at the same time client machine. But that is client as well as server and then we will try to understand the basics of it that is where the data is stored how the data is to be captured where to put the data how the users will be uh, will be will be, will be how the users will, will have the access to that data and then we will try our own to write something like php maybe that is a today we can won't be able to write that one but we'll discuss that one a bit now let me share my screen so that you can see this one share it. now you see i'm sharing my screen and once in this screen you are seeing this one this is a php tutorial we will go with this one this tutorial this is available in net and i will uh, post that one in your classroom also 
And first and foremost thing is that this machine right now is connected with internet and if you see if you see uh, this one now in this machine if we write uh, google.com google.co.in it said that that is a google is coming but this google is having its own ip address it is having its own ip address and that we do not know because this name is coming from the dns server so obviously there is some kind of numbering patterns predefined numbering patterns are there which is kept in the dns server along with the name of the google that is you can say that when two columns are there in one column google go in and in the second column the corresponding ip address is written there so whenever the client this browser in this browser we are writing something we are rather uh, just giving any uh, keyword or like that so it is start trying to go to that place <coughs> the store and you see this is rather coming from the google server or google directory itself whether we are searching that one or not is the it's searching it so now you see this is home now this type this gesto this https gesto.org so google is referring to this particular address to the dns server and the IP server and from the IP server it is matching that one which IP is rather uh, carrying by gestor.org and now the gestor page is there so you can have your access to your library but you can log in also you can register also if you have user ID password but this is not important so this is whenever you are connecting to internet and you are accessing resources kept by gestor not by you this is only the content kept by the gestor in where you do not know but if you have the login id they will authenticate you and they will let you access their collection that is it so now each and every machine is having one very specific ip that is w 127.0.0.1 if you write this address you must get one web page here that is what is called as the local host local host means by then only you will understand that your machine is also working as a server but mind it, this is not a web server, this is a local server as because 127.0.0.1, this IP is the static IP for all the standalone machines in the world. So machine you have in your home is having this address, the machine uh, Jaydeep is having, the Sagata is having, Pavitra is having, everyone is having the same address 127.0.0.1. And that's sort of why this machine cannot be connected, can never be connected to web because there will be the address conflict. Everyone will have 127.0.0.1. So the browser or rather any service provider or search engine, they won't be able to understand that is in which particular address they have to forward this square. So that is why this is not the web ip address this is rather the local ip address now what is local ip local ip means the ip of your machine standalone machine which you use in your home only you can use that one but if you want to change this one you have to purchase your own ip from one service provider you can go for static ip you can go for dynamic ip for static ip the price is rather bigger for dynamic ip whenever you will purchase the domain name they will assign you one dynamic ip and that dynamic ip is static to that particular service provider and that's why almost all the times whatever be your ip you will be directly landed 
to that page, your home page. Now we want to install one software in our machine so that it can give us the local host or rather the first page, a kind of page that is it can it can assume it can think that one this machine is rather a server as well as a client. So how we can do that one? So now we can do this one in this way. There are several such software, but this is known as uh, LAMP stack, L-A-M-P, LAMP. But we are not rather right now, we are not using LAMP stack. We are rather using one <coughs> Windows stack, that is W-A-M-P. So here we are using A-M-P-P-A's AMPs. And these AMPs, this software, is developed by the Softaculous Limited. So let me show you this one that is uh, then Now see, this is the place from where we are downloading this one. A M P P S. Amps. Now you see, this is what Amps. This side. Now what are this Amp stack? So Amp is a warm mom lamp. That is what. A stack of stack means combination so it is having the Apache web server it is having the MySQL database it is having the MongoDB another database it is having the PHP it is having the Perl. it is having the Python we are not going to use this one right now so because this is out of scope of our syllabus and I do not know whether I will get any kind of chance to tell you something regarding Python. So, but still, if I get that one, so I go for one or two classes for the Python. Perl is also important because Koha itself is written totally on Perl. So, and this space. So, apps. Now, if you go there, you will see that one. So, download apps and with soft appearance. Now, what is this soft appearance? Soft appearance is one company which made some auto scripts for installation of the software you can install that software software of your own so first of all one after another just you see go to the download amps and once you will go to the download amps, you will see that one. There is a current version 3.8. Then this is a 3.9 version. These are the two versions. Now, that is that if you if you if you want to use the very current version or rather the beta version, this is there. That is 3.9. And this is the current version. This is the stable version. Stable version. That is bark free. You can say. And this is the experimental version, not the production level version. But you are running this one in your own machine, so you can use this one. And this is C, AMPS, supports Windows 10, 2019, 7, 8, Vista 12, all these things up to 16. XP 2003 and 2008 is not supported. So you can download this one, that is a 64-bit setup. Now you have to check that one. First of all, you have to go to your PC, go to the properties, and then you see that is whether your machine is having 64 bit operating system or x64 bit processor or not. If your machine is not having this one, so you will be in trouble. If your machine is having the 32 bit operating system, see, as for example, in my machine. So I recently upgraded that one, this is the Intel i7, uh, this one and my machine, the total RAM is 32 GB. Because of this one, that is I have to do a lot of calculations and other things. So that's why the RAM is also a bigger RAM. The more bigger RAM, the more better CPU, the more faster will be your machine. But at the same time, you have to have this one also, that is your processor. So if your processor is a 32-bit processor, then you have to download the 32-bit amps. But if your machine is 64-bit, 
you have to download the 64 bit one how you can get this one go to your uh, this pc go to the properties menu and you will see that one about and you see that one this is the product id and 64 bit operating system this one after this is sold okay now close it and here comes the amps i already downloaded that one because it was installed in this machine i uninstalled this one because of uh, not using that one for a long time so let me install this one once you are here right click and go for run as administrator and here you see click yes and then you will come to this wizard that is amp setup and go for next agreement next see this you can install with this one all the software zoomla wordpress ptpb gallery everything so now just click on it now here is the important thing whenever you are using or installing any web server or rather some kind of software which will act as a web server and at the same time which is a stack rather a group of programs don't try to install it in its default path try to install that one in the very root directory that is a m p p s that is in c itself so that whenever you have to uh, change the path whenever you have to um, uh, write something or rather even whenever you have to put something in this directory you always have to search for that one go to a long path like c program files and so it is wiser that keep that one in the root directory and if you put that one in the root directory so speed will also be enhanced so you click next amps create a desktop icon lunch icon start menu it's okay and then go for install And see it will ask you to install some additional software as because this software is not available in this machine so just go for install or might be if you see this one failed you will understand that one already your operating system installed this one and that's why there is no need to use that one because you see another version of this product is already installed so this is not required so please so okay now you can go for lunch amps finish once you will go for that another instance and apache is already running on your machine do you want to stop that and start this one yes i had one yes now you see here you see apache this is the web server the green one it is showing that one it is running php version 7.3 Although the very current version of PHP is PHP 7.4, or is PHP 8, PHP 8, but this integration is having only PHP 7.3. You have to install that one of your own. And this is the MySQL database. We are having this one. So AMS is running under C AMS MySQL started, Apache started. So this is your place and you can minimize it once you will minimize it this is the icon that you will see that one then the amps is there now go to the very place and take this one and now you write 127.0.0.1 and press enter and you will see that one the local host this is coming this is your local host see this is local host don't think that one this machine this page is connected to network this page is rather still it is the local host it is running in your own standalone machine 
although it looks like that one you are in wave so it is asking for security just read that one so the password to secure this one any password you can submit and then that one, the password successful so we are getting that one now just if you give localhost it will simply give you this one that is cgi bin error so you are typing this one localhost localhost is the name for local localhost is equivalent for one to seven point zero point zero point one now you can ask me how you are saying this one from where we can get this one so okay then let me show you this thing so go to this one very important place go to c drive then go to windows then go to system 32 this folder and then try to get here one file named as hosts host system okay. now windows let me search this one h o s t post file Yes, this one. Win SX, this was file. So open it with notepad. And here you will see this one. See this thing. I told you the DNS server. So it is written like this one. See, this is the IP address and the name of that particular IP. This is the address. This is, so in our case, this is the IP address 127.0.0.1 and this is localhost. The localhost name resolution is hand, handled with DNS itself. So this way localhost is written. So whenever you are typing localhost, it is going to this address and it is showing that one what is there. So localhost. So it's already inbuilt whenever you are. So now question is we do not want to see this one as our uh, local host. so we want something here that is how we can we can do this one so first of all uh, let's go to the very structure of this place that is where it is installed this amps what the software uh, are, what are the softwares installed by amps so let it be like that so now come to this place C. Now think of this one where we installed AMPS. We installed AMPS in the AMPS directory and this is the directory. So go to AMPS. Now see it is having AMPS. It is having Apache, Config, FileZilla, MongoDB, MySQL. So all these are now PHP. Now see all the versions of PHP is here. My, my, PHP my admin private sql light manager 10 www then other and this is the directory www this is the directory where you have to keep something for getting that one through web interface this is the place if you write any html file you have to write that one under www directory if you write anything in PHP, you have to place that one in this directory. Then only you can access that one from the localhost, browsing localhost. Otherwise, you cannot do anything. So first of all, let us uh, make one document. So this document is a very rudimentary document I am rather making. Just uh, allow me to write something. Uh, 
So this one, suppose this is I N D E X, and this one is HTML. I'm writing first one that is the HTML. Yes, and now edit open with not bad. Not now here write something very um, short HTML now write Suppose this is now you think we have written head, head, HTML, HTML, okay. So save it. So now you are having this one, the HTML here. Now close it. Now go to this place again. And now just run this one. And now you see we are now using a local web server. So we are getting that one, our, that file, HTML file, index.html file is now working. That is, we are now using a local web server. It's already there. So, okay. So, this is a very basic HTML. So, we have it. So, where we actually keep it? We kept that one in this one. C amps www. This directory. This is the place where you have to keep this one. This one. Okay. Now, our question is why? So if I open this one, it will run. So the HTML file, well, why did I do this one? That is, I kept that one under this page in local host, whereas by double clicking this one, it runs. Okay. Now, HTML is a kind of scripting language which can be used, which can be used by any which which can be opened by any 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 web browser and it will show you that one. but it won't show you that one see if you double click this one it won't show you the result if you write a php here just for example uh, let me open this page again index.html open with notepad and now see this is this one and write this one title is this now body function x under body we are just using the first php command here that is hello world see this is the php uh, okay you might be, might not be able to see this one. Let me make this one much more bigger. So this one, see this thing. Don't confuse this one with this P. So this is the PHP beginning tag. There's angular bracket question mark PHP. It is the starting of PHP. Then echo means just produce the result on the screen. Hello world. And whatever you are kept keeping within this inverted comma, this is known as literal. This will be printed directly on the screen. And then each PHP is terminated by a semicolon, just like you see. And then the completion of PHP tag. So you did it and you saved it. 
Now try to run this one from here. And if you run this one from here, so what should be the output? Our output should be, we are now using a local server. At the same time, we must get this one. Hello, what? See this one. Double clicking this one or rather keep copying this one from here and taking this one to the desktop and double clicking this one. What are you getting? Hey. What are you getting? Are you getting the desired result? Yes or no? No, sir. Why? There is no hello world. Yes, there is no hello world. We are not getting the hello world. So, Sagota? No, sir. PHP tag is not working. Right. So, PHP tag is not working. Okay. So, this PHP tag is not working as because we are running that one. We are just running the file in the browser. Okay. So now let us let us see this one from the local host itself. Local. Now you see we are using this one, and then we are trying to get that one. That is PHP echo. And this is also not coming. Okay, then let me check this one. What we have written. Oh God. You have to change the extension as PHP. Okay. Now let us see. Is it coming? So whenever you are writing something or rather whenever a PHP tag is embedded in any document or rather you are writing HTML tag, you are embedding PHP tags within one HTML file. Only thing is that you have to write the extension as PHP. You cannot write that one as HTML. So if you write that one as HTML, it won't show you the desired result. Now, where is the catch? So why PHP result was not coming whenever we were using the HTML tag and why from our desktop whenever we try to open that one it didn't come so this is also if you make so okay then so you can say that one that is it is because of HTML so I'm changing this one as PHP so write that one as PHP extension and then try to run it you will see that one. Server is side programming language. Yes. So PHP is totally a server side programming language. Now what where it is the why it is server side? And now you see whenever you will have this one that is the server, and here you see the PHP is there, and this is the PHP 7.3, and here is the PHP.exe. This PHP is there within your server. This server is processing your PHP tag. As because this is not available outside of AMS, so it won't run. So it is not giving you the desired result. So here you are getting this one because this PHP processor, it is the PHP is the hypertext preprocessor. It is helping you. This PHP exe it is helping you to decode that one. So where it is doing that one. So whenever you are running any PHP software, PHP file from any kind of server, the server is stripping off those portions. That is the only PHP portion, so not HTML portion. And it is giving you the result. Once you are getting the result, then obviously you will be getting the HTML as well as the content of the PHP, rather all the all, all, all the processes, all the statements you have written in the PHP script. Okay, 
So this is what is the main aspect of PHP. So you have to have one server, one. So our server is running here, and at the same time we are having. So it's not required. Um, so now we have this one. So okay. Now we are going for uh, something like. So jam use kulle hobe. Which one? Jam X M P P. Yeah. Yes. Or yes. 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 Or thirty two bit er aje. Oh no problem. You can use that one also. You can use that one. You can use W A M P. So anything you can use. No problem. So now. Uh, to go for this one, that is some of the things. As because you see, PHP is a scripting language, a language or scripting language, and it is always interpreted from the server side scripted language. And because in the server PHP X is there, PHP N is there, so we have to know something regarding the PHP. That is some aspects of PHP. That is what. For each and every every software or uh, every sorry every language programming language, whether this is a scripted one or rather compiled one, it is having its own syntax. It is having its own uh, grammar. It is having its own keywords. It is having its own. Flow. So. That's why here we are going to for this one. Now, first and foremost thing is that why we need PHP or why do we need PHP? That is, what is the requirement for having PHP or rather, why should we learn PHP? This is this should be clear or this should be clear to you because you no. Know, uh, PHP is important because in library and information science, whatever we actually do, whatever we usually do, at the back end there is a database. Without having a database, you cannot even think of any program right now. And for the libraries, it is rather more pertinent. Why I will say it's not only library rather almost all the cases or most of the subjects. As for example, as a PHP uh, sorry as a PhD student, uh, whenever you were collecting the raw data from the field, you were nothing but you were generating, you were collecting the data, and if you want to keep that data in a searchable way, it is always wiser for you to keep the data in a database format rather than that of a flat file like. Word or other. So, if you write that one in Word or like that, you have to do. You have to search each and every time for the component. You can even keep it in Excel, but Excel is having a very good facility that you can convert the Excel files into CSV file, UTF-based CSV, CSV file, and that can be imported to any databases like MySQL, Access, everywhere. So, you can do that. So this pretest hyperprocessor, it was developed in 1994 by Lardoff, Ramas Lardoff. So what he did, so PHP is having very advantages. It is footprint is very small as because it is only working. It is not working in the client side. It is not working in your browser. JavaScript, in, in contrary, JavaScript works on the client browser and then the output it is sending to the server and then it gets processed whereas php is directly processed from the server so your client is or rather your browser is not busy if the server is fast then you will get a very fine result in real time this is one second thing is that php is simple it is just like your c c like syntax that is the only thing it is having its own variables it is having its own, but it is not very, very um, actually hard coded or rather very strict like C. But PHP is case sensitive. PHP is obviously case sensitive, but it is not white space sensitive. So, okay, let us come one by one. So, 
how to write this one or this one. So this what is the code? Now see this one insert the text box. And we are starting that one like that. Okay. This is what is the main body of PHP. So you can start writing PHP like this. And if you want, you can write your HTML here also in this place. You can write your HTML. You can write HTML in between PHP also. No problem. I'll so as long as your this PHP uh, initiation is proper, you can write that one. But this is rather the body of PHP. And just like you see, so let me show you something in parallel. So. Now here you see that is as should be all by this one so this it will also be this this will not open no. this will be this will be this 
and let go for z equals to Now you see, right hand side, what is the code? Which code is this? C. C. This one? C. This one is C. So this code is C. I already told you that one, that is the PHP is somewhat like that one, C. So one after another, we will go for this one so that you will understand what you have to learn. So now see, in PHP is a scripted language or scripting language, whereas C is a compiled language. So after that, you have to compile C with run button or run menu. So then C will be compiled and it will create the executable. But in case of PHP, PHP will never uh, compiled, is never compiled. It is rather interpreted. Two things are different. This is the interpreted programming language and this is the compiled programming language. So it is having its own syntax. Now, I have written this one because might be you people are having some bit of understanding of C as because it's a basic programming language. And then we are coming to this one. If you have the very basic programming sense, then you will understand the other programming language much more better or easily. Now see, first one, this one, these are rather the inputs into directives. These are the directives. These directives in C means these are the library files or header files, header library, which H denotes these are the header files. These header files are not the part of C language. These are the add-on packages given. And whenever you install C in your machine, so in lib directory, these files are there, stdio.h and conio.h. stdio.h means standard input output header file and conio means console input output header file. Console means your, this one that is the machine, analogy, mouse, everything. So in PHP, such type of directives is not required as because it is not going to be compiled. Whatever you will write. So the question of inclusion directive is not available in php nowhere it is there now each and every c program starts with a main function and the main function starts with this curly braces and it completes with this curly braces so this is the beginning of main function under the main function there can have several sub functions and also the procedures so one is the function in any programming language, two concepts are there. One is the function and second one is the procedure. Can you tell me what is the difference between procedure and function in programming language? Any one of you? Do you have any idea of this one? That is, what is the procedure and what is the function in any programming language? Because you have to be very clear about all such things. Otherwise, that will create problems. So if you see Visual Basic, you will see that one procedure. In, in C also, in higher level programming language, there are the procedures and the functions. So the procedure and functions are actually same, but 
they are different in one aspect function always gives a result in true or false star function it gives you result and this void this is the integer value you can write int main or rather void so either it will give you the result so true or false function is always gives you true or false result but procedure never gives you any such it just only executes and if the result is there it will give you the result else it will just keep itself uh, silent but function will give you the result either it is true that is executable executed or not so that is what this is the main function so now in php there is no such main function it is direct but it is started with this one you can say that one it is equivalent with this main so every php program must be started with one angular bracket then one question mark and then php without having any white space but php is white space neutral so you can write that one there also and here you have to write your code so and here you see the curly braces we have given php never bothered about this one and this is the actually these are the syntax of different languages but whenever i have written you have to write the code you have to write the code this code you have to write the code here now what you have to do you have to write code Now you have we have written this one. Okay. Now question is here we have written that one. Here you have to write the code. Code. So this is the C code. This is the C code. But this is the PHP code. But you see the PHP codes are not written like this way. PHP code syntax of PHP code writing is something different. A bit different, okay. So what the first one is this int, and this one the first line. What is the meaning of the first line? And each and every programming language, whenever you are dealing with the data, you are dealing with the program, the values, variables. You have to predefine the data in case of C, but in case of PHP. These are not, you haven't to uh, declare that or there is no hard and fast rule that you have to declare all the variables along with this data type at the beginning. Now, what is the data type? Now, see, your variable can be integer value. Your variable. So, here what we are doing in C program, we are asking our user to enter a value of value that is the x. And we are preserving the value, and this d is the equivalent to integer. This percentage d in C means this is the integer value, and this ampersand character, this is the pointer. That is what give the value of x what user entered in in the memory as an integer value. Then print the value of y. Sorry, print this text. Enter value of y. This text. And wait for user's input, and this n means go for a new line character. So then scan if the value. If the user has given any value and pressed enter, scan the value. The and this is also integer value. Keep that one in the memory in y. Now z create another integer value z. Multiply the value in the memory kept there in x. And y. Now print the value of x and y, which is integer, in a new line. Result is z. Get ch until and unless user is pressing any kind of input device. Hold the result on the screen. This is the description of the C program. The same thing here in PHP. Here you are writing that one in. But in case of C, in case of PHP, 
all these variables all all variables no not the constant the variables are usually written as that is with a dollar sign so dollar x okay now dollar y dollar z so instead of this one you have to write that one as dollar is it a semicolon yes so this is just the pattern is different so you have to write that one there so this one here we are writing printf and in php it is known as echo echo means so what you are writing in c in php you have to change that one as echo scan if is not available in php the equivalent is not available you have to do that one of your own and here also you have to go for e c h o echo and then you can go for this one that is the echo the value of this one that is enter the value of now here you see you cannot mm, go for this one here you have to have one input form so in c you will get the console and it will actually wait for your input as because php is rather one um, uh, you can say the browser compatible scripting language so browser will not understand that one where to enter the value so here you have to put some input form like input box or text box where you have to insert that one so you echo is fine but at the same time whenever user will where user will type that one you have to insert that one here you have to keep this one here so only thing is that you can write here right now we are just writing that one so suppose this one is this one is 10 and y equals to 15 and then z so the so you can write that one so dollar z equals to dollar x into dollar y and then echo echo the product of x and y is what is that dollar z so and this gets ch is not important so now you can say that on c here we are what we are actually doing we are asking for user input this is a bit more because in the first c program we usually just hard code it and this is what you are asking for user input i will come to that one so what we did we have a main function like this one that is the php beginning we have the variables the variables are like that in c variables are rather given as variables are to be written like initialize the variable before writing the statement in php you can initialize variable anywhere it is not required to be written at the very beginning even you can write that on within this so this is what and you can do all maths all all operators the mathematical operators arithmetic operators are supported but we will go to that one later step by step so now only one Sir. thing is that yes yes the php the fast echo ta to lagche na bolu kaje kunta echo enter value of y no na it lagche na
see this one but here one important thing is that in c whenever you are initializing the variable you always have to mention the data type also now what is data type data type is whether the data c is going to be stored it is a string it is the integer it is the float value or it is the character value you have to write that one at the beginning like in so whenever you are so if you divide x by y and if there is a fraction if your variable is initialized as integer so c will always give you wrong result because integer divided by integer according to c is always integer it won't give you the float value and that is the big problem we see here the data type is rather very strict but in php the data type is embedded within the php php is smart enough to understand the data type with the use of operator if you use the operator so it will simply understand that one i have to multiply so x is obviously some kind of integer or float like that if it is so y i have to product i have to multiply it is so it is smart enough it understands this one but c never understand this one that is with that x and y so suppose you have x is 5 and y is 3 so if you divide this one here we multiply it so obviously the result will always be uh, you see integer value but if you multiply 5 divided by 3 the so result will be a fractional result but your result will come as 1 why because integer divided by integer in c always gives you the integer value clear is it clear jaydeep yes sir namaskar jaydeep age kokhono programming language korechis c korechi sir kobe koto din age sir mlic chilo ageo korechi स्वागता without any kind of problem it is so now see this one okay let's see out now uh, let us go for so what we next one so now we have to go for this one php is main shoots now that is uh, variables and variables and constants number 2 operators number 3 that is the conditions conditions loops data so we have to cover these things now here you see this is what this environment setup i am not going to this one this is rather document full unify this these are important one 
variables contains the first one that is inside text box. So we just have to make use of it. It is integers. Okay, now doubles, now booleans, now null, now strings, now arrays, now objects, now resources. So what we have, the different types of variables, we are having integer variables, we are having the floating variables like doubles, we are having the boolean variables like true or false, the same just like you see the null variables, that is at least one value null, the string variables, that is the more than one letter, the array variables, that is which are rather a variable having n number of values and objects are rather some kind of arrays but where we are already having the programmer programmer defined classes that is you are defining that classes these are considered as we'll cover this one no problem that is other kind and then resources that i told you last one that is the databases, okay, such as database connections. So these are rather we are having that one integers, the whole numbers, doubles, the floating point, so decimal points, booleans, you know, true or false, nulls, strings, arrays, objects, resources. So these are rather the different types of variables available. Now in this one, so. Uh, the important thing is that, important thing is that, compound type, it is not there. These are the main points of the selection and then paste it here, new slide and these the essentials and keep this one here and make this one bigger. But I told you which are now I won't tell you, you better tell me if you don't understand, you better say. If you don't understand, then I will tell you that. Because after that I will give you some work. Cut it. Now I already told you that one. All variables in PHP are denoted a leading dollar sign. Oh, oh, I won't, I won't tell you that one. So, okay then, first one is very clear. Second one, you better say, what does it mean? Okay, okay, let me let me show you that. One. So that is, suppose you are saying that 
writing something like for dollar x equals to zero semicolon dollar x is then equals to ten semicolon dollar dollar x plus plus and then you are writing something this is what you have to do this one now see what is the value of now check it sorry check it the value of the variable is the value of its most recent assignment second one this one recent assignment now you see in the first what you did first value is what so it is actually reading from top to down what is the value of x here what is the value of x here the value ten. of x here is 10 but whenever this one will start for now what are you giving the value of x Zero. 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 So now, what is the recent value of X? Zero. Zero. And that's for why this won't be considered at all. Yes. <laughs> what you stated, you just stated. So the value of a variable is the value of its most recent assignment. And do you know this operator? So this operator. This operator is known as assignment operator. And what is the what is the difference between this one? Dollar x equals to ten. Dollar x. Can you tell me the difference between these two? Hmm? <laughs> See, the first one is put 10 as the value of x. It is not actually the equivalent to 10. That is the assignment operator put the right hand value to or assign the right hand value to the variable. That is it is now 10. But whenever you are giving double equal sign now, you are saying that one x is equal to 10. It is not actually this one is assigned here. So this is what the equal value of x. So x is 10 and this is 10. But here this one is now this is this assignment operator. You can write that one. This is like that. That is sorry. Here you have to write this one. What does it mean? It means that one assign the recent value of x to y assign the recent value what the x is y is having to y but whenever you are writing this one as y this means x and y both are same equal of value so in, in variable this is much more used and this is much more used as a constant that where the value is static and it is the value where the value if the y varies the x will also vary but here this will always be same that is if y is change y is this one this one also and even you can write that one this y into three three so it will always change it will it will always change but here you can go for that one also equal sign you cannot use that operator so this is what you are always saying that one x and y are equal. So now second is over. Now third, see variables are assigned. Variables assigned with the equal operator 
with the variable on the left hand side with the variable on the left hand side and the expression to be evaluated on the right and variable and expression to be evaluated in the right so this one you evaluate and keep the value assign the value to this one now fourth one variable can can in our case what we did here variable can variable can but do not need to be declared before assignment there is no such need. But we did here. You can use right uh, here also x and y. That is x equals to 10 and this one. You can write that one directly here. So you can write this one x equals to 10. And y equals to. So no need to write this one. So you can write this one in this way. Now variables in and here you see this is the important one I told you. Variables in PHP do not have intrinsic type. Intrinsic means that one. That is the integer, double, float, boolean, all these things. A variable doesn't know in advance whether it will be used to store a number or string or character. It doesn't know. It recognizes this one with the help of the operator. So this one. Then, oh God. Did I highlight it? This one? Yeah. Okay. Variables used before they are assigned have default values. The variables used before they are assigned have default values, obviously. So if you have do not change that one or if you didn't change the recent value, so it will have their own default value. Default value. PHP does a good job automatically converting type from one to another when necessary. As I just told you, in C, if your variables are integer type, and if you use such a kind of activity where the results will come as a float or decimal, C will just give you the integer value as the result. That is 5 divided by 3. It will never give you 1.33 or like that. It will only give you 1. But PHP is not like that. PHP does a good job automatically converting one type to another when necessary. So whenever you are dividing 5, uh, whenever you are doing this operation 5 divided by 3, C will give, sorry, PHP will give you 1.3333 result. And all PHP variables are the par like variables. So today what we did, we did something regarding the PHP, just the initiation. And we completed the variables all like that. So no other thing till date. And uh, I'm, I will give you that one. But a lot of materials are available in regarding. To. Now, um, I'm rather giving you one assignment so that you can do that one from your uh, learning. That is what you just learned now. So we some bit of operators so operators also i think you know that one that is all the operators are rather plus minus so now i am rather giving you one task write a php file where but you do not know how to give the user input field so i have to do that one first. user input is important because user input is not rather taken by php user input is rather taken by html so okay then so today i am not giving that one so tomorrow monday i do not have the class tomorrow i think tapon is having the class so tuesday again i will take this one so that I can give you that thing that is how you can make the input boxes and how you can take the 
data from input boxes and do calculation by using PHP so that the user interaction can be done. So next day we'll be doing this one. In the meantime, you also try to get that one. That is the HTML input and PHP integration. So just try to browse that one. We'll be revisiting that one in the next day. Okay.